Welcome to CMC Markets on Tuesday the 29th of September and the weekly market update. Now, I think one of the questions that I commonly get asked when markets are trending strongly one way or the other is whether the trend is going to continue or whether it's going to quickly turn around and reverse. And to be quite honest, there is no real easy answer to that question. The best thing you can do is trade the price action in front of you. Now, the markets I'm going to cover today are, not surprisingly, going to be equity markets. We are at some very key levels, not only in the Nikkei, but also in the Hong Kong eight shares, the German DAX and the UK 100. Now, I covered the UK 100 and the German th Germany 30, the German DAX, last week. I make no apologies for going over them again this week because I think they're no less relevant now than they were a week ago. We've seen significant selling pressure over the course of the last few days, as well as significant buying interest. And these whipsaw, these whipsaws that we're seeing in the markets, both up and down, suggest to me that a market that remains very um, confused as to what the next move, higher or lower, will be. The best way to identify trading opportunities is to look at the charts, look at the price action, and identify key support or resistance levels and then design a risk management program off the back of those levels. Also going to be looking at the dollar yen, particularly in the context of this week's non-farm payrolls um, data that's due out on Friday. Don't, don't forget to sign up for our webinar, our monthly webinar, which starts at 1.15 on Friday with me and Colin. And we'll be going over these key levels, revisiting the charts that we visited today and determining whether or not we're going to continue to move higher or whether or not these significant declines could actually run into some significant buying interest and we get a rebound. Now given the concerns about Chinese growth, we're going to be focusing on first and foformost Hong Kong 8 shares index as well as the Nikkei 225 because of any potential spillover effects there. We've also got the Tankan survey out on Thursday, so that could actually play a big part in where the Nikkei goes to next. But it's going to start off with the Hong Kong 8 shares index. And as we can see from this daily chart that you've got in front of you right now, we've been in a very clearly defined downtrend since we peaked at the end of May. And I've drawn in that line pretty much through the highs, through, through June, through August, and through September. And we're closing on a key support level, which we saw at the beginning of September, just above the 9,000 level, and also the 2013 lows currently coming in around about 8,650. Now, one of the cornerstones of technical analysis is the trend is your friend. What is a downtrend? It's essentially higher, lower highs and lower lows. I nearly got that wrong. It's a succession of lower highs and lower lows. So this key support level is very, very crucial in the context of where we go to next. Going to move on to the Japan 225 or the Nikkei 225. Now this is a weekly chart that we're looking at right now. And we can see from the weekly chart that this actually looks a fairly orderly market. The intraday moves would suggest otherwise, but certainly in the long term, we've got a clearly defined uptrend. It's been in place since the end of 2012. The problem now that we have to decide is to whether or not this long term uptrend line that we're seeing the market test at the moment is on the verge of breaking. Certainly if we look at the slow stochastic, it does look very oversold, but don't let that fool you. That doesn't mean that the market can't carry on going down. So how the market behaves at this particular level is gonna be crucial in the context of where we go to next. If we break lower, then we could well see a further move down to 16,380, which was the peaks that we saw at the end of 2013 and towards the end of 2014. So there's a double, there was a double resistance there. Resistance, once it breaks, tends to act as support on the way back down. So if we break below around about the level that we're currently at now, around about 17,000, we could well see a move down to 16,380. Going to move on to the German DAX now, revisit this chart. We looked at it last week. It's no less relevant this week. The only difference is we're right on that key support level at 9,300. 
if we manage to post a weekly close, this is a weekly chart again, if we manage to pose a weekly close below 9,300, then there's a very good chance we could well see a move towards the 200 week moving average and that currently sits at 8,750. So it's potentially a 600 point move lower on in the event that we do sustain a move below 9,300. At the moment, we're finding a significant amount of support at this level, and that does make me a little bit cautious that we could actually have the potential to rebound quite strongly. And that is why it's very important that you actually keep a very close eye, not only on the trend lines, but also the previous lows. Last but not least amongst the indices, we're gonna look at the UK 100. Good support, 5,870. Also trend line support on the daily charts from the lows in August. This 5,870 is a very, very key support level. If we break below that, then again, potentially we can revisit the lows that we saw in August. The pressure is towards the downside, but as we've seen in recent days, do not underestimate the potential for a short, short sharp, short squeeze higher. So we're gonna finish up with dollar yen. I think for me, this is very, very compelling because we've got a whole host of Japanese data out on Thursday and we've got US payrolls data out on Friday. Now, given what Fed officials have been saying about the possibility of a US rate rise, I still rule out October, irrespective of what Fed policymakers make, may say or indicate. I think at the moment, given the concerns that are surrounding the global economy, an October rate rise is too soon and I think it's unlikely the Fed will act while we're seeing the amount of volatility that we're currently seeing. And let's face it, do you think it's likely that the Fed will hike rates at a time when stock markets could potentially be falling further? That's the big question. So with respect to dollar yen, the key resistance levels, as indicated by this triangle that I've drawn on this daily chart, around about 121 on the top side. So a positive US figure, could well see a move higher towards 121. A negative US figure, we need to sustain a break below 119.2. If we break below 119.20, then I think there's a significant expectation that we could well test towards 117 and potentially the lows that we saw earlier this year. So we got through quite a lot this week. Make no apologies for that. It's very important that you look at the support and resistance levels and the trend lines, the long-term and the short-term trend lines for indications of direction. Just leaves me to say thanks very much for listening. Don't forget we've got non-farm payrolls on Friday. Please feel free to sign up for that. Until then, this is Michael Hewson talking to you from CMC Markets.